Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We are not to be insulated from the world. We are to be a change agent to the world. Through Christ, we are to be light to our neighbors. We are to offer hope to our friends and co-workers. We are to infuse life into a desperate world. Through Christ, we will do even greater things than these. We will lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. We will see the city transformed one life at a time. We are the church. Well, good morning, Mount Rivers Church. I want to welcome any of our newcomers today. We're really glad that you're here. We hope you feel like home. And uh, we also want to welcome those of you uh, watching online today. Uh, we know there's probably quite a few more than, than normal watching online today. It's, it's crazy how much rain we've had. I thank God for nourishing the ground, but man, it's out of control. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, though. God promised he would not flood the earth for 40 days, so we know we're good. We're not going to be like, you know having to float our way to, to freedom, so it's, it's all going to be good. It will recede. The waters will recede, people. It's going to be It's going to be good. But hey, uh, how many of you guys had a good Christmas with friends and family? Yes? <laughs> awesome. I love it. love Christmas time. love hanging out with family. And how many of you guys feel a little bit of guilt eating all of the uh, extremely unhealthy food that you... <laughs> Feeling the pain. I'm feeling the heartburn. Yeah, it's 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 working its way. But um, yeah, we're we're really glad to come out of the Christmas season. I think we had a tremendous um, Christmas series, a Christmas story. We were really really pleased to see uh, the great turnout and attendance over the last few services. But more importantly, really really glad to see those who raised their hands for salvation. And uh, so many people. You know, make decisions over the last couple Sundays for Christ, and that's why we do what we do. But I want to bring special attention to the fact that, that, that that's really not possible without the incredible volunteers, the serve team that do what they do each and every week, and the leaders in this church doing what they do. And uh, the, the reason this church is on fire and out of control is because we have some leaders and some volunteers that are on fire and out of control for God. And so we're really, really glad uh, for what God is doing. But we're, we're even more excited about what he's going to do. And, and that really kind of ties in well with, with what we're doing this morning. You might notice a little bit of a different format. We're going um, to we're gonna have some fun today, okay? We're going to just kind of visit with you and, and share kind of the vision that God has for 2016. And we have invited some very, very special people on the platform with us. Um, we have some of, uh, some of these leaders are really a great representation of every generation in this church that is being ministered to and discipled on a regular basis. So uh, right here next to me, we have Captain Kim, our children's pastor. She does an amazing job every week leading the kids' ministry and seeing that these kids are, are really being discipled. And when I say discipled, what I really mean is, is I, I'm talking about being disciplined in the faith. Teaching kids to be disciplined about the things of God and to be in their word and to worship and to build godly friendships. Those are things that she's constantly pouring into these kids on Sundays and Wednesdays and every day in between. And so she does a great job. We also have with us Miss Lacey Hilburn, who is our director of Accelerate. She is over our teen discipleship, so she's responsible for pouring into our teenagers spiritually every week. And she's got a great team as well. And then we've got Brandy Keith with us. And she is uh, she's one of our life group leaders, adult life group leaders, uh, who is responsible for pouring into adults every Wednesday night and really does a tremendous job. We were also going to have with us today Cody Bishop, who was unable to attend because he is flooded in today, as there are uh, many others. Like he doesn't have a boat. Exactly. <laughs> I, said, I said, dude, what's your excuse, man? <laughs> get a paddle and get here. No, uh, we're thankful for him. I told him just to snuggle up with his family, have a great time, do some devotions, and, and just rest today. But, um, but this is a representation of the discipleship that's taking place in our church. And, and I just want to give a quick plug for Wednesday nights uh, because a lot of times I think people misunderstand the importance and the purpose 
behind Wednesday night. Sundays is totally, it's a totally different animal, right? Sunday mornings is about this corporate worship environment where we all come together as one group, we worship as a body of believers, and, and it's great, you know, and, and there's, a, there's, there's a place for this, all right? There's a biblical place for this. But Wednesday nights is more about going deeper into the Word of God and encouraging your, your personal and spiritual growth while also helping you to connect with godly people around you that are going to encourage you, pe people you can become close friends with, people that you need to be rubbing shoulders with on a regular basis because birds of a feather, they flock together and we become just like who we hang out with and, and greatness is contagious. And so we want to find people who around us who are great for God and we want to rub shoulders with them. And we want to just basically copy their behavior and learn to, to act and think and, and breathe the way they do so that we can become more like Jesus. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what these leaders do each and every week. They are following Christ and they are inspiring and influence the generation that they're responsible for to follow them. And as a result, amazing things are happening every single week at Mount Members Church. People's lives are being changed. We hear story after story after story after story of great things that are being done. So before we get into casting vision for 2016 and really kind of sharing what we feel God is wanting to do in this church, let's take a moment to just recap some of the great things, some of the wins, if you will, for 2015, some of the great things that God has done. Uh, how many of you guys know that when, when you're on a team, you want to be on a winning team, right? And, and we believe that Mount Rivers Church is a winning church because we are constantly hearing of these great victories, these great wins in people's lives. And here's what it comes down to. Lives being changed for all of eternity. That's what this is all about. That's why we do what we do. That's what drives us. That's what motivates us. Is we are changing lives each and every week for eternity. We're rescuing people from hell and we are offering them heaven as their home forever. So what I want to do is, is uh, I want to start with Captain Kim and let's, we're just going to kind of hear from her. We're going to, she told me right before we came out, she said, I don't want to go first. <laughs> Sorry, that's just how it is. We're going to start with kids ministry and then we're going to go to teenagers and then adults. And so let's just let's just celebrate real quick. You know, what are some things that stand out to you, Kim, uh, for 2015? What are some things that, that God has done? Well, first of all, God has taken this ministry, like this year has been unbelievable. We started out in January and we basically had two couples, four people, and at currently we have ten Woo! right now. That is what God has done this year. That You're talking about volunteers, right? Volunteers. Volunteers yes. with all your kids. Yes, okay. volunteers. So you started out with two couples, and you have more we're, than doubled that. Yes, more than doubled. And we have more that says, hey, look, I, I want to you know, step up. I love kids. And let me tell you, you better love kids to be in this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, we don't want you in there if you don't love kids. <laughs> yeah. A long time ago when I was in college, we had a professor, and he was training on our, our kids' ministry. And he told us about a story of how they had a teacher in a zone, and the kids always cried when they left her, her classroom, and they couldn't understand, and they finally started asking the kids, like, what's going on? Why do you not want to go? Why do you cry when you come out? And they're like, she's famous! <laughs> and the pastor went to the teacher, and he was like, the kids are saying that they get spankings in class, and she was like, well, they're terrible. Yeah, they get spankings. <laughs> spanking your kids, yeah. but you better love kids to be with them. Yes, and we have an incredible team, and like I said, I can't go burn up how, I, it is amazing when you see those volunteers come in, and where they were at, and when they have that real and life change relationship with Christ, and God ultimately starts changing their life, and you stand there and go, wow, God, thanks for allowing me to be a part of something so awesome, it, it is such an honor and a privilege, and when you see those little kids, it, and, you know, we have one little boy that, um, it was a couple months ago on a, on a kid's pleasure night, and he was in the altars, and I'm telling you guys, this kid had him a Jesus moment. I mean, Jesus got a hold of this kid, and he he got up, and I grabbed one of my volunteers, and he was just crying, and I'm like, what's the matter, buddy? And he's like, I, you know, he got it so much that he said, I want you to pray for my grandma and my family, and I want them to be able to come to church, because that, to me, was so amazing that he got it, and he wanted them to get it. And he said, sure. And so 
we began to pray for him. And as we prayed week in and week out, we would see that grandma's face. And that grandma had begun coming on Wednesday nights. And when you see that, it's like no greater joy. I can't even explain that joy that God thanks again for allowing me the honor and privilege to be a part of something. So and look awesome. at the power of prayer in a child. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. sometimes we underestimate the fact that and God hears children when they pray. That's tell right. me because their their belief is so powerful. Right. They they believe more than we do. I mean, the Bible says that we should come to to God as dearly beloved children. We should have the same level of faith that they have. So that's so powerful, so awesome to see. And that's just you're just scratching you're just scratching yeah, the surface. Just, There's so many things that happen week in and week out, and, and that's just amazing. So awesome. Okay, well, Miss Lacey, uh, accelerate. Teen ministry, I think you're nuts. Uh, teens, <laughs> that, teens are very teens scary. <laughs> teens, teens are scary. No, uh, that is a very special calling, and uh, but you do such a great job. I mean, we we constantly are hearing great things coming from Excel, Accelerate every single Wednesday night. So, what are some great things that you want to highlight for 2015? Well, I want to start off first, kind of backtracking a little bit from where I came from. When God laid on my heart to work with the team ministry, um, he poured into me the words, if I knew then, what I knew now. Yeah. And it just boiled inside of me over and over and over again. And, um, you know, the hardest part was not just to think of all the things that I could do to um, encourage the teens to um, know what I know now that I wish I would have known then, but how was I to portray it to him? You know, I was scared to death to get up on the stage. I was scared to death to speak in front of anybody. And that was my hardest part. And this year, the thing that stepped out to me in the team ministry is I had four or five of them step out of their comfort zones and, and relate to their peers the things that God had been laying on their hearts and teaching the class, being transparent, telling where they have come from, where they've been, where they are now, and weren't, I mean, yeah, they were nervous. Everybody's nervous when you do it for the first time, but they they went past that, and they were able just to, to step out and really um, to bring what God has laid on their heart. And, and that's a huge step because um, as an adult, I struggled with it. And as teenagers, they deal with so much junk that to be transparent with your peers is a huge deal. And they rocked it. They did an awesome job and really got the message spread across. Yeah. Very, very awesome. Yeah, I remember when, when you guys did that. And these these teens were so excited. I mean, you'd see them before service, and they were, they were nervous, they were fidgety, but they were going over their notes. And some of them were asking Misty and I for advice on, on how to speak and connect with their, their peers. And they were serious. I mean, they, they went all out. And, and I'm telling you, Man, they stepped up their leadership. They were stretched. So powerful. You know, we're, we're only as great as, um, as our ability to, to step up our people into leadership. And so when you step those teens up and into, uh, onto the platform like that to speak, you're stretching them. You're encouraging them to, to pursue leadership. And uh, how powerful is that? And so a lot of people like to say that our teens and our children are our future. But really, they're our here and now. They can be used right now for God in, in amazing, amazing ways. We just have to give all their lacking is opportunity. And so um, we and we give them that opportunity as, as Lacey has. How powerful, awesome, I love it. Okay, Miss Brandy, let's talk about adult discipleship. Let's talk about life groups. What, what, what happened this year? Um, well, I just want to kind of paint the vision kind of like Brad did as far as what we do on Wednesday night because this is so, so important. It's like our whole ultimate goal is connect you to you, you know, one person to another within the church. And so if you're interested in this, we want to make sure you get together with this other person because we need to make friends in the body of Christ. And Wednesday night is where it's happening. So, um, But also our other big win on Wednesday nights is basically when we're preparing, we're thinking, how can I bring the Word of God so clear and relative to where somebody can walk away if they never do anything? They can walk away and apply it to their lives today and start living in power for Jesus Christ. And so every week when we prepare, that's what we're trying to, to think. Um, 
Man, there's been so much that's happened this year. I'm so excited. I got to write that down. I was thinking, man, there's a lot, a lot that's happened. So, yeah, and it's so awesome because it's not just in the adults' wing. It's like in the kids' wing and the, the teens. It's awesome. But, you know, one of the biggest things I think that we've done this year, um, also big win, is we, this summer, got so large in our life group, um, in our life group uh, that Brent and I do, it just got out of control. You know, we had so many people, we didn't have enough seats. And so we actually, in August, launched a second life group, and that's the amazing, amazing thing of God that multiplies. But Cody, uh, Bishop, and Shelby um, stood, stood up and said, I'll lead the life group. And so they have been a part of changing people's lives for the message of Jesus Christ every week now. And so it's been amazing. And also in August, we didn't just launch that one, but we launched another one because we were seriously maxed out of space. So that is awesome to see people come out of their homes on Wednesday night. So excited to be a part of what God's doing and want that for their lives that we needed to launch two new life groups. And so what we also launched was the Newcomers Life Group. And man, I'm telling you, this has just been a big win for us as leaders and for the church, for you guys. Because man, how many of you have been a part of that and really enjoyed it? Amen. So if you're a newcomer, it's not about being a new believer. It's about being a newcomer to Mount Newers Church to see... Basically, Pastor Matt, Brad, and Misty, they lead the life group, and you get to see firsthand what the backstory is of Mount Rivers Church, why God planted us here in the middle of nowhere, and what he's doing, you know, and um, you get to hear it right from them, and the awesome thing about that is you get to rub shoulders with them week in and week out, and so you're not only getting to know them personally, but you're getting to spend time with them, and they're also teaching you the basics. You know, whether you have been a Christian for all of your life or whether you're just now getting started, this is the perfect life group for you to get through because they teach you the basics, you know, how to pray, you know, how, you know, why we believe what we believe, you know, and what it is that we believe. And then also, you know, how to study the Bible and what your part is in the kingdom of God, you know, what, you know, what it is to be a church member and what that means for you because all of us in here is on a platform. Not just us up here. And so what, what we're learning, you know, is how we live that out in our lives. And it's and, and great, great for you guys to be able to meet them personally and, and be able to experience that. But, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, this year, when you look back over 2015, so much happens in the course of a year that a lot of times we forget. That's why even for you as a family, it's really good to just stop what you're doing before the end of the year and just sit down like as a family and think about like what happened this year, what good things happened. Maybe there's some things that are not so good that happened, but it's all history and it's all memories that we need to look back and remember. You know, the Bible talks a lot about remembering. I think about the story of um, Joshua leading the children of Israel across the Jordan, and when they got across, God told them to go take 12 stones and go stack them up to be memory stones, basically. And as the future generations come past, every time they see these stones, you're going to remind them of what God did right here. And so this year, we wanted to stop and just remember what is it God did in 2015 that every time we come past that building, that second life group building, we're going to remember that in 2015, we outgrew the current buildings and we had to expand. And the building's not done. I mean, you go in there, it's not beautiful. It's just like when we expanded this sanctuary in 2010. It wasn't beautiful. We didn't have sheetrock. We had concrete floors. But guess what? Every time we walked in, we were reminded God is doing something in this place. And that's what you see every time you pass these buildings. Every time I go into the kids' wing, okay, that's my sound. We'll leave it. Every time I go into the kids' wing and I see that they're destroying the walls, right? There's a hole in the wall. And it's like, oh my goodness, we so got to remodel. What it tells me is that people are in this room every single week. That's why the walls need to be painted. That's why we need to remodel because we've got kids in there having a blast learning about God. I would much rather a kid's elbow go through the wall because they were doing some crazy game than everybody sitting there. Some of you guys are looking at me like I'm crazy. It's because it is not it is not cool to come to church and bore kids. It is a sin. If you were a leader and you bore a child it's in church, it is a sin. It is. I mean, if, if God would have had 11, it would have been it's a sin to bore people in yes. church because it's not cool. But I want to tell you one of the biggest wins overall at the church happened on March 29th. And I want you to watch this video as we remember where we went in March 29th this year. Hey guys, Pastors Brad and Misty Helton here. We are so excited to be announcing that we are moving to 
two worship experiences. Over the years, we've seen family after family after family come to experience a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. And we're just getting started. Sunday, March 29th, we will be going to two worship experiences. It's been an exciting adventure. Seven years ago, starting on our couch with one couple, no money, but a really big dream. We're, We're making, making room, room for, for you. you. So on March 29th, we made more room for you. We made more room for our community. And I want you to know that this church has grown 40% since launching on March 29th. <laughs> Come on, girl. Come on. There, is a, there is a rule in any organization, okay? When you try to bring people together, whether it's in church or whether it's in business, when a room gets 85% full, people don't want to come in anymore. Because guess what? Most of us do not want to sit this close together unless we know one another, right? Like, give me a space in between. And I want to put my purse and my coat in, like, I don't want to get too close even though I like you. You might smell kind of funny, right? People don't want to come to a crowded building. And so by expanding, you know, Brad and I as pastors, when we, every step along the way, we would hit this plateau point. And when we started in our home, there came a point where it got crowded and weird really fast. Like, how many more people can sit on the love seat with Bonnie and Patty? I mean, it got weird. And so we were like, God, where do we go from here? And God says, go take that old nasty farmhouse and remodel it. And of course we said, nada. Not happening, don't want to do it, but guess what we did? We did it. Because there comes a point where you just have to be obedient and stop arguing with God because he kind of knows your future. And so we did that and there came a point where we had 75 people smashed in that kid's wing. And then guess what happened? We started losing people because nobody wants to come and be crowded in a zone. And so every time that would happen, we'd say, God, you've got to give us a vision. God, you've got to show us what to do. And guess what? There's a fear factor that happens when God begins to show you your next step. God began to say, okay, step out and go break ground and build a building. And we said, but we don't have any money. Like, we don't have a lot of money to do that. And God said, step out and break ground and go build. And so in 2010, we broke ground on this building and we started phase by phase by phase. I mean, every penny above the bill went to put the sheetrock on and put the carpet down and do the tile and one step at a time. We didn't have bathroom stalls for the longest time. It was weird. It was awkward. There were two toilets in that room.
Why? Why? Let me tell you why. Because God says that when He gives you a vision, you tell it to the people, you write it down, and you walk it out. You don't stop just because you can't see how it's going to play out. And it works the same thing in your life. You may, God may be dealing with you on something and telling you, I want you to do this. I want you to do this for me. And you're like, no way. I guarantee you, every one of these girls sitting here, and Cody as well, when God spoke to them to step out and do something bigger for him, the first thought is, I could never. I cannot do that, God. I can't do what you're asking me to do. But yet, when we step out, we begin to give God an opportunity to do something amazing. And then we look back, and we're blown away at what God has done. Do you realize that last Sunday alone, we could not have fit all those people into one service? Do you know that? There's no way, shape, or form. It could not have happened. But because we were obedient as a church, because you were obedient as volunteers to say, I'll serve. I'll serve. Give me an umbrella. I'll go stand in the yeah. rain and bring That's people good. into God's house. I will do whatever I can do with my gifts and talents. We have ministered to this community. And guess what? 2016 is only going to get better. I want to share a scripture with you from Proverbs 29. And it says this, 29:18, Where there is no revelation or there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. Another version says it this way, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Nobody wants to be a part of a losing team. Nobody wants to be a part of the team that says, Well, you know what, let's go out there and give it our best shot. No, you want to go, I want to win. We're going to practice harder, we're going to go out and win. And this team, this leadership team has a vision for reaching more souls than ever before in this community in 2016. So we're going to quickly let our leaders tell you their vision for their departments, and then Pastor Brian and I will wrap it up with the vision overall for this church in 2016. Captain Kim. Well, I have to say that um, when, whenever we actually, that whole thing about, you know, God has a plan. Whenever God called us here, we'd all worked together before. And it was kind of like I said, okay, I need a break. But when we came, I knew that my heart was truly kids ministry. And they already had kids pastors. And so it was like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And it was not, I'm not kidding, maybe not even a month, maybe two that we were here. Um, those people got called to another church and they said, hey, look, this is, this is what God did. God had a plan the whole entire time. And for us, for my team, they are incredible. God has, when you pray, God send the laborers. When they said we're going to two services, <laughs> okay, Lord, I got one, Lord. I got one, Lord. You know, it, it was scary for me to go, okay, go to two services. Okay, trust God. You trust God. You totally trust God. And you say, God, send the laborers. And when you pray that prayer, you better be ready because he will send them. They will come flooding in. And so part of my vision and goals is, you know, we want to raise spiritual champions. We want to raise these kids up to be spiritual champions. And, you know, two hours a week here, you know, um, on a Sunday morning and a, and a Wednesday, to me, is not enough. You know, it has to go farther than just my team teaching these kids how to be those spiritual champions. And also, it is the parent's job. You know, God said to train up a child in the way they should go. And so part of that is one thing that I would like to make available this next year is resources to parents. Um, to be able to sit down as a family and say, how do I grow my kid to be that spiritual champion? How do I grow myself to be that better parent? You know, and so that was really on my heart this last week is how much time, we all have jobs, we all have things that, how much time do I truly get a pour into my kids? How much time is that? And so that's one of the goals is that we would like to make those resources available, whether that's through an app for your kids to, to give kids like, you know, we compete with technology. We compete with sporting events. We compete with all kinds of things for our children. And so that was that was one of the things. Um, also, another thing is is um, we would like to have a drama team. We want to put in place, have a lead for drama. Kids learn more by seeing something visually or even being included in it and acting it out. And we'd like to have that as part of our goals. Also, to renovate that kids' wing, as Misty was saying. We'd like to put barn metal on those walls because that also serves as a multi-purpose room for our teenagers as well. And it's durable. Yes, it is. And so... Yeah. And so we would also like to see that... Because um, like I said, when those kids see, see those things visually, 
or they're involved in them, it, it helps them to relate more. And so we really want to see those things um, come into place for this next year. Awesome. All right, Ms. Lacey, tell us your vision for Accelerate. Well, um, being that Accelerate is our class in Accelerate back in the back room is only about a full year through. Um, I'd like to see our sizes back there, our class size and our numbers double. Yeah. Um, part of what I, you know, part of my vision is for these teens to, to seek and know God's uh, presence and grow in their relationship with Him through their work. And with them doing that, I know that they're able, and they can, and they will, and they have, been able to go out to their schools and invite their friends and people that they know. Um, it's hard, like I said, as a teenager, I think teens are probably one of the hardest ministries to, to get them up and motivated because um, the world has such a heavy, um, a heavy toll on them and it's so hard for them to stay focused and, and keep their blinders on and to, to move and know that the only thing they need to focus on at that point is God. And, you know, um, but to be able to go out and, and draw all their friends in and and double our size, but with that we also need about two to three, maybe even more, depending on how God raises our numbers, of adult couples to step up to help mentor and, and to help with these teens on a Wednesday night and pour into them and, and, and help them to understand more about um, what God's vision is for their life and, and what they need to know. And, you know, I've mentioned Lindsay are on my team, and they do an awesome job, but as our numbers continue to um, grow, we're going to need more hands on deck because um, they they need, a lot of times they just need a one-on-one -on -one counseling session, and we have, you know, male and female, so we need male mentors, we need female mentors. You, um, you know, guys don't always want to come up and, and pour their heart out to a, a female. It's just the way they work, you know. And... Um, with that, as the numbers grow, um, we also have the teen internship, um, which is led by Captain Kim, and she um, does an awesome job with that. But um, the teens stepping up and growing, you know, more into their leadership. They show me already they can do it, you know, by teaching the class, bringing their message. Um, now they just need to step up and, and be uh, part of the internship program and help serve on a weekly basis and with that they do you know the Bible journal that holds them accountable and and that's what they need to stay focused and uh, you know those two we had a handful of them through the last couple of years that have been baptized and, yeah. and there again as our numbers grow there's going to be new lives to come to Christ and, and to see these teens baptized and, and let them be a role model to these little ones, you know, showing an example of, of where God has called them to be and, and, you know, where their life needs to be portrayed as they grow into a teenager. And, and there's hard knocks. I mean, there's hard knocks as a teenager. I've been there, done that. And, you know, um, but God's going to do great things. I know. I feel it in my, in my spirit that, that things are going to grow. These kids are going to be on fire and, and our numbers are going to double. Awesome. All right, Ms. Brandy, what do we see for Life Drift 2016? I'm really excited about this. I've been praying about this, and, you know, I've never been one to see a really big vision. You know, and since I've been around Disney Brad, that's what they just, it's just contagious. Yeah. And so I've been praying, God, show me, you know, what do we have for adults, you know? We seem to sometimes get stuck in a rut to where we're just doing the same thing every day, day in and day out. But I just want to let you know, I heard this awesome thing, and it, it just spoke so well to me. You know, whatever you're doing now, you're just training. Training to do something for God's kingdom. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're training to do something because God is going to use you. And that's, I love that because, you know, it doesn't matter what we're good at. Because, you know, God is going to use you. And it's amazing. And so that's what I see for Wednesday night is people stepping up. Taking their, you know, hats off and saying, man, I want to I want to do more. I want to be this. I want to be that. Uh, but one thing I really do see is Wednesday night exploding. I mean, we're already, you know, uh, expanding our life groups, and honestly, that's where it's at. You know, we want to do real life with people. We have real lives, and you know what? The Word of God is everything, you know? Everything else will pass away, but the one thing that will stand is God. And I tell my kids that all the time. You know, we can get so focused on all these kinds of things, but the one true thing that's going to stand is God. So where's your focus? And so... 
That's what I want to see this year, and I know it's going to happen. I mean, I know God's going to do it. He's already doing it. He's bringing the people in and changing their lives for the glory of God and for all eternity. I watched it in men, which is like my heart's great desire. Not that I don't love you women, but I just love watching these men get a hold of God, surrendering their lives and saying, man, just keep going. I, I watched a fly on the wall, you know, just watching these men, you know, encouraging other men, saying, get back up. You can do this. Hey, do not stay down. That is the enemy. Get back up. And I'm thinking, good job, you know. I'm like, man, you are getting it. And it makes me fired up. It makes me excited to want to do more. But I'm watching the men leave their home. I'm watching the men step up and take roles in the church. How many do we see doing that in our churches anymore? I'm excited to what God is doing here at Mount Fairs, but he's doing it for a greater purpose. It's, it's greater than the outside of these walls. And so Wednesday night, I feel like it's going to explode, but we really need people. We need people that will get, you know, God get a hold of their life and change them for the glory of God and saying, hey, I want to be used. Use me. I want to do something greater for the kingdom of God. And I know God's placed on my heart a few of you. I'm not going to make eye contact because I think there's some of you in this room. But this, that I know God's been dealing with you. I know he has. And he's saying, you got more to give to me. And so I'm believing for, you know, our whole serve team, you know, on Sunday morning is like awesome when we've got this future. I believe in that for Wednesday night. We need greeters. We need to come together and be like, hey, what's my job for tonight? And I'm like, yes, sir, you need to be here. You know, you need to be there. Not me, but I'm just saying, you know, we need those people. We need to be fired up and excited about Wednesday night, too. Because you know what? We're going to get a culture that's all we call home. You know, we're not going to just live on Sunday, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to live it every day. Because that's where life changes. That's where it's going to, you know, affect our life and the people outside the doors. But I'm expecting for more life leaders as that's, well. That is awesome. And I want to add to that. We, Misty and I are so proud of the men of this church that have stepped up this last year. I mean, there's... And that probably is right at the top, uh, even with two services. I mean, seeing the men of the church step up in leadership in their homes and in God's house, I mean, that is what it's all about. Leadership flows from the head down. And a lot of times when we hear the word leadership, we think of it as being in business. Uh, we think of it as being maybe on a team. But it starts in the family. And I want to tell you that... that, that with our ability to, to, to raise up incredible godly men in this church, the community will be impacted because of it. And so I want to continue to see that in 2016, more and more and more men being contagious with their leadership, stepping up to the plate, and, and being that missing link that we talked about earlier in here. That's, that's so awesome. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, you know, vision, and this goes for you guys personally too, vision is so important. Because it's, it's, it's our ability to not, not just see things the way they are. Not only see things the way they are, but it's the ability to see them as they can be. And that's really what being a visionary is all about. You can be a visionary for your home. You can be a visionary for your job at work. You can be a visionary for your children. You can be a visionary for your health, for your finances, for your mind, for your time, for your ministry. Uh, being a visionary is about, it's about seeing things differently, all right? Seeing the potential and seeing that the possibilities of what can be. And God calls each and every one of us to be visionaries in every area of our life. And even in the church, God calls us to have a vision. And God gives a vision to the leaders, and then the leader's job is to translate that down to, to the leaders in the church and to the volunteers and orchestrate it and watch God go, right? And so I'm so excited about 2016, excited to hear the vision that God has birthed in each, of every, in each and every one of these leaders. Um, I'll just tell you uh, real quickly, you know, what God has laid on our heart, and that is, uh, you know, there's a saying, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but the shoe, Brandy loves shoes, she has like a thousand of them, but the shoe should never determine the size of the foot. Let it sink in. The size of this church has been determined by the size of this building. Now, we thought outside the box, and it allowed us to break the 200 barrier earlier this year. We blew past the 200 mark because we went to two services. We've increased incredibly with our volunteers and our serve team. Incredible, because we, we made more room by going to two services. Well, now, we can't go to three services, right? 
it just wouldn't work. And this work, we're running out of time. We can't do any more service. We can't do a Saturday night. We've actually tried that before and it didn't work. We can't really meet at like 6.30 in the morning and do an early, early service. Uh, the time, the time is, we can just take a vote right now. Who's in favor of doing a 6.30 service? No? Okay. But notice it's the kids. It's the kids. I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to roll out of No, so, so really, this is our time. This is where we're at. The Lord has, has spoken clearly to Missy and I. It is time to build. 2016, it is time to knock this wall out. It's time to expand the sanctuary. And, and, and we need a foyer. How many of you guys have noticed it's a little cramped? in the foyer out front. Uh, so, so here's what we're going to do. If, if we can look at this uh, drawing, this is a very, very rough drawing that Misty and I threw together recently. And this basically will show you a picture of what we're wanting to do. Everything in white is what we're wanting to add on. It, it's approximately 5,000 square feet, okay? If you notice the sanctuary, that dark square with all the seats in there, um, that would be knocking out this stage. And it would be bringing the seats forward. And then we knock out this south wall. And you can see we would add an additional, um, it looks like uh, it's an additional 60 feet. Okay? Don't look at my numbers. It's additional 60 feet past this wall, making this entire new addition 120 feet long. Okay? And then what we would do is that would give us the ability to double our stage space, which will give us, give us a lot more room to do bigger performances. How many of you guys... I love, I love the Christmas uh, performance that the kids did. Awesome. We're planning on doing one this Easter. We're going to need more stage because we've got more kids than stage. And so, so we're going we're gonna to double the depth of the stage. The, the width of the sanctuary would remain the same. We're just going to make it longer. And then it'll give us space back behind the stage for a green room for the musicians and for special guests, a bathroom, so I don't have to run through here and go to the bathroom and then divide the crowd like 30 seconds before the countdown's over. Uh, so it's going to give us offices and it'll give us an upper level for storage and a, and a conference room maybe. And then if this is the most exciting part. If you look down at the bottom of the drawing, it says new foyer, all right? So what that, what that is going to consist of is, you notice this, this drive-through awning? We're going to totally and completely close that off. So we're going to put on the, we're going to put north wall up and then a west wall. And then we're going to head this way down the whole length of the 120 feet. And we're going to close in the length of that, of that drive-through awning is 20 feet. So we're going to go 120 feet long by 20 feet wide, and that will all be foyer space, the whole length of the building. All right, so the reason that's cool is because it's great for overflow. For, for I mean, hey, we're creating room. We're making room for them, right? We're making, and who's them? It's the people you work with that are hurting and hopeless and helpless and in need of Jesus. It's, the, it's your family members. It's your friends, right? It's your next door neighbor. It's those people that God has been burning in your heart to talk to who are making room for them because we want to rescue them from hell and give them eternity as their home. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what, how this is going to play out, but I would love to see a huge Big Cedar Lodge type fireplace, a big stone fireplace right outside of the square and have a bookstore. We'll open up and double the size of the coffee shop. Uh, on Wednesday nights, if we got some portable dividers, it would allow us to do three or four additional life groups all throughout that foyer. It'll be so big. Tons of room to, to just hang out and visit. Tons of room to just have a great time and, and mingle. And uh, I love it. It's an exciting vision. It's an exciting uh, time for us right now. It's very realistic. And so here's basically, we don't know exactly what it's going to cost, but but we're, we're figuring it could be $250,000, $300,000. That's just kind of a guess, all right? What's so crazy about that is I just kind of crunched the numbers and I said, all right, so if every family in this church would just commit to giving like an extra $60 a week, right? $60 above, above tithe. We could pay for that thing in cash this next year. That's huge. That is huge. But just like we did with this building, Misty, remind them what we did real quick before we close. What, what allowed us to really start this building project? Because we didn't have 175 grand to start this building project. What happened? We, we had purchased the land already. And so when we started to build this, 
We figured we could afford $25,000 was all we could afford to build this building that you're sitting in. And so we went to the bank and we had already purchased the land. We refinanced, took another $25,000 out, and we started this building. And if you look around, this building obviously cost way, way beyond $25,000. But what it did is it got us started. And so what we are looking at as a business team is possibly doing the exact same thing, and that is refinancing what we feel like we financially can as a church, and then it will put the structure up, and then we will pay the rest out. We'll build it in cash. So we may go concrete floors for a while. We may go no sheet rock on the walls for a while. But we believe that 2016, we are making room for the rest of our community because right now, even with two services, Last Sunday, you were here, you saw we were plateauing. We were past the 85% full mark again, which is amazing because we are here to lead people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus. That is contagious. And if you have contagious faith, you're going to go get your lost friends and loved ones and bring them in to let them hear the gospel and literally snatch them out of the hands of the enemy. And that's what we're doing every single week. So this new design would allow us to accommodate comfortably about 400 people between between the two services. So that's really cool because that means that there's so many people out there that we need to go reach for the glory of God. Amen. So we're excited. Uh, but you know, sometimes you have a great idea and then sometimes you have a God idea. This is something that God has birthed in our hearts as leaders. And we know that we know that we know that we know that this is God. This is God's timing. This is what He wants to happen. And we're just excited to be a part of it. Excited to have these great leaders and the rest of our leaders and volunteers that make this possible every week. Our best days are ahead. That's right. we're, guys, we have not even scratched the surface of what God wants to do around this entire region, all the way down to the tips of northwest Arkansas and outside the, the boundaries of, of Grove and Wyandotte and Seneca, all the way up to Joplin. People's lives need to be changed, and we're the church to do. Amen. So if you would stand up with us today, we're just so thankful for what God has done in 2015. So thankful for what He's going to do in 2016. It was so exciting to hear these wins today, but I can't wait to see what God's going to do. And, uh, and what I want to encourage you guys with today is God wants to do the same thing in you and in your personal life. God wants you to have a vision he wants you to see your life. He wants to see your children, your career, your ministry, not just as it is, but as it can be. God wants you to know that, that your future is fueled by your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And God wants you to be driven to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, God is with you and He's going to meet you every single step of the way. Maybe some of you are saying, Pastor Brad, I need a vision for my marriage. It's falling apart. I want to tell you, God is able. Some of you might be saying, Pastor Brad, I need a vision for my finances. I want to tell you, God is able. Whatever the case may be, there's no problem too big for God. There's no battle too big for God, right? You've heard us say this before, the, 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 the battle that's before you is nothing compared to the God that is so big inside of you. God is able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what you can imagine or even think. But you've got to give it to God. Amen? Give your very, very best and let God do the rest. Let's pray today. Father God, we're so, so grateful. God, we give you thanks for all of these wonderful wins that were celebrated today. God, all the great things that you've done in 2015. So, so very thankful, Father God, for these great reports. And Lord, I know that we've only been able to share a few things. There's so many things that you've done this year. And, and we are just so very, very grateful, God, for each and every one of them. God, your word says that, that it's your will. God, that in everything we would give thanks. So today, God, we give you thanks for 2015. But Father God, we're not willing to settle for the way things are, Father God. Lord, we are believing that 2016 is going to be our best year yet. 
God, we are believing for relationships to be drawn closer to you, for breakthroughs to happen in people's lives spiritually, for people to, to see the shackles broken off of their lives from sin and to see them set on fire for you, Father God, to be in love with you and to follow you and, and, and pursue you in everything they have, to deepen their relationship with their hunger for your presence as priority in their life. God, we're believing that, that we're going to see uh, marriages strengthened, Father God. We're believing that we're going to see relationships between parents and, and their children, Father God, strengthened. That, that parents are going to respond to the call to raise up godly kids in such a time as this. Father God, we're believing that we're going to see financial breakthroughs in 2016. God, that, that, that you, the people of God are going to recognize their call to stewardship, Father God. To, to, to get out of debt and to position themselves to be a blessing, Father God, to those who are in need. God, we're believing that you're going to do incredible things, Father God, in the mind of your people and in the ministry of your people, Father God. We're believing that you're going to do an incredible thing in Mountain Movers Church history, Father God. There are so many hurting people around us. I pray that you would reveal to us who they are. Help us to love them, Father God, as you have loved us. We honor you today, Father God. We thank you in advance. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, I, I never want to ever conclude a service without giving an opportunity for you to, to experience why we do what we do. And that is for you to have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. As we're praying right now, I want you to, to be full aware of what it really means to be saved. It's about admitting that you have fallen short in sin, just like we all have. It's believing that Jesus is who He says He is, and confessing with your mouth that He is Lord. It's about dedicating that you're going to live for Him from this day forward according to His Word. And I want you to know that the Bible says that even now, God is preparing a place, a mansion for you in heaven, for you to live with Him for eternity. How awesome is that? We're going to walk on streets of gold. There's not going to be any more crying. There's not going to be any more pain, any more suffering. It will be an eternal bliss. Heaven is going to be amazing. And I want you to join us there today. In your heart, this is the very beginning. This is the step in the right direction to make heaven your home. So I'm going to count to three, and when I do, if you want real and life-changing salvation, I want you just to raise your hand, and I'm going to pray with you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Anybody in this house? Amen. Amen. Can we pray? Let's pray. Let's pray as a family this morning. And for those of you watching online, I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with us if you made that decision. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. thank you for your son, Jesus. We admit that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Forgive me, Lord. Wipe my slate clean. I believe that you are who you say you are. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I dedicate from this moment forward my life to be lived for you according to your word. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.